Every knife enthusiast has an idea in the back of their mind of what might be their grail knife. That's that mythical do-it-all knife that uh, is designed to your specifications. For a long time, I've thought the Bark River Bravo handle, combined with their Canadian blade, would make a superior hunting knife. This knife would be used for deer hunting, of course, but it would also be used as a bushcraft knife and probably a survival knife. Recently, Bark River put out the UP Bravo. UP stands for Upper Peninsula of Michigan. The UP combines the Bravo handle with the Canadian blade. I got one immediately, so I started ringing it out, and here's what I've found so far. Let's take a look at this new knife. Here are the specs. Overall length is 9.7 inches with a blade of 4.6 inches. Blade thickness is 0.156. The steel is A2. The UP, of course, features the Bravo handle. A good question might be, why do you need a UP Bravo when you already have a Tundra? This is the Tundra and this is the UP. And if you look at them, you can see there are some differences. Blade differences are right there. The uh, UP is a little thicker and it's got a little more belly to it. This will make it a better skinning knife in my opinion. The handle differences are slight. This is the Aurora handle and this features the Bravo handle. The Bravo handle has this semi guard there whereas the Aurora handle doesn't. Now is this going to make a lot of difference? Well, I don't think so. This knife has been used a lot for deer and elk hunting, and it has been extremely bloody, and my hand has never slipped up onto the blade. I've used the Canadian-style blade pretty extensively, and here are some of the things I like about it. Many people have not seen this particular type of spine. It's got kind of a hump in it. This is really useful for when you're gutting an animal. When you're doing that hold where you open up the abdominal cavity, this right here will keep you from possibly piercing the entrails as you do that motion in tide to split the rib cage. It also makes the point centered. So when you look at that, you can see there's a straight line right through there. This helps a lot if you are drilling or something like that, maybe making a uh, fire bow kit or something. But anyway, you get a lot of thrusting power when you have the point centered. This is a drop point, of course. And as far as I'm concerned, that's probably one of the most useful points you can have in a hunting or survival knife. You'll see the tip is not particularly thin. It's a, it's a sturdy tip. But it also is thin enough that it will work well for piercing, for starting that initial cut uh, under the tail of a whitetail. What I look for in a knife handle is I want to be able to get a solid grip on it. For me, that means I have to have these fingertips not touching my palm very much. Okay, this is really almost a little too slender for me, but I like it a lot. I don't have a problem with it as far as it twisting in my hand. One thing you can do when you're trying to determine if a knife handle is going to be big enough for you is grab it on the spine and twist it like that and see how much effort it takes for you to hold that knife solid and keep control of the blade. It has a convex grind. As far as I'm concerned that is the most useful grind you can get on a knife. Now I've used Scandi and flat grind and, and all that and I've, tr I've tried several skinning. What I found out was convex is best. Now the handle is where you're going to really start to notice the difference between the Bravo handle and many of the other handles. Now it doesn't have a guard per se, it has this right here, but it allows you to get a solid grip like that. Your hand is not going to slip off onto the blade when this gets slippery. Now, something else that's interesting. These micarta and wood handle blades, they tend to get grippier when they get wet. And I don't know why. I wish someone would explain it to me. But I've had knives like this that were completely covered in, in blood and the goo you get from gutting an animal. And they were perfectly safe to use. 
This handle works very well in, in several of the grips we use for most knives. This is your basic hammer grip, you know, like that. All four fingers and everything. This pinch grip is what I use a lot when I'm skinning an animal. I use this motion and it's going to help me use the belly of the blade a little better. And it'll be like that. This is a very solid, stable grip with this handle. Another grip a lot of people don't use is this one here, and I'm not sure what it's called, maybe a reverse hammer grip, but this is used for uh, opening up an animal or something like that. Another one that you don't see very often, but meat cutters will use, is this grip. And this is used for uh, opening up an animal, uh, breaking it apart, that sort of thing. You'll see uh, butchers use that a good bit. In any of these grips, the Bravo handle is working really well. So that's the UP Bravo. I think everybody can figure out, I really like this knife. Is it going to replace my Tundra? I don't know yet. We'll have to see. But I'll tell you this, I'm glad I've got both of them. Your particular grail knife is very subjective. What works for me may not work for you, and my grail knife might be your disappointment. But half the fun is the journey, and I thoroughly enjoy researching knives and continuing to look for that ultimate grail knife. This is Survival Common Sense. Thank you for watching. Go outside. Have a great day.